Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. Uh, my name's Kayleen and I'm your host and welcome back for another long-awaited episode. So uh, I'm getting in a podcast for February and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, so I've had a little bit of a hiatus on social media in the last week or so. I haven't posted much on Instagram, but we all have been sick this whole month has been a month of illness for us, so we're just kind of laying low, taking it easy, but that doesn't mean I haven't been doing anything. I just haven't been able to share everything with you, so I thought I would hop on here and do a really quick podcast about the things that I've been up to and um, the things that are in the shop right now. So in terms of knitting and crochet, I haven't really done too much. Spinning, I haven't really done too much either since the last podcast. Uh, I was working on a commissioned pair of socks, which I finished both pairs of socks that were going out to Christina, and I'll put a picture up here for you. Um, one of them was in the Flu Network, and one of them was in a rainbow colorway. And she's commissioned me for a third pair from the leftover yarn, and I have just enough to make one more pair. Um, I haven't started them yet, but we'll be starting them this week. Uh, the yarn is right there. Uh, I've done a little rearranging in this room as well. Normally my knitting machine was over here. I've moved it over there. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully everything goes smoothly. But that's really the only knitting I've done. Um, I haven't really felt inspired to knit, inspired to crochet. I have done some dyeing, um, but it's just been really rough. Uh, I know I've mentioned on podcasts previously that I kind of struggle a little bit with depression and um, stress and things like that really hit me hard. And when I'm down, I get really down. So I've also had a really hard time with my mood in the last month, trying to keep things positive, trying to stay motivated. Uh, I've been really working on that. So thank you guys for bearing with me. Um, and so I want to get into the things that I've been dying, the things that have gone up into the shop since my last podcast update. For those who don't follow me on other social media, um, this may be the only update for you guys. So I want to make sure I get everything in. Uh, as you may remember from my last official podcast, I was talking about dyeing speckled gradients, which I have been doing and have been updating into the shop every now and again, maybe every few weeks or so. And the first run of them, I still have some left. You can see in the cube here, um, there are a few pairs left and I do want to show them to you here right now. Okay, so... I did do a custom dye recently. I haven't posted these up yet. Um, Ashley, one of my customers, asked me to dye a custom gradient for her from dark gray and purple all the way through a teal and then to a cooler tone blue. So that is what I did. Uh, hopefully it's not too overexposed. I might have to adjust this in post editing. Uh, but these will be going up. This is what they look like before I reskein them, and they knit up into a speckled fade when you knit them in socks. So everybody's been on the fade train over the last year or so, and so when I dyed these, that's what I had in mind. So I'll show you a picture here. Um, these were my own socks that I made. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> the shade just fell. Um, I also saw a pair of socks, which I'll put another picture here, uh, that Sarah over at the Hooks Books podcast had made. So I'm very excited for those. Those are her little unicorn socks, and I love them so much. So I do have these. These are going to go in the shop um, relatively soon. I don't even think I've named this yet, but I do have others that are in the shop right now. There's only one or two of each available. So if it is something that you like, there were 10 of them. So now I'm holding like 10 skeins of yarn. So this one was, frankly, Lisa, I don't give a damn. Uh, this one faded from dark blues and into some chartreuse greens and then into some pinks and dark purples. So I'll put up a picture of the sock blank, what the blank looked like before I reskeined it so you can have an idea of the color transition. Um, this one was Bright Bow and as the name suggests it was a bright speckled rainbow that went all the way through the spectrum but fluorescent colors. So I think this is the last one of Bright Bow, and that was the last one of Lisa. Um, this one was called Royalty, 
and it goes from this like antiqued gold all the way through navy and some deep purple. So again, I'll put up a picture of what the of what the uh, thing looked like, what the thing, the sock blank looked like. Uh, this one I called Pygmy Puff. This is a colorway that I have reimagined several times, but this one goes from bright fluorescent pinks into uh, like like blacks with fluorescent pinks fading to white. So that one's really fun. And then it's little fluorescent friend here. This was called Killing Curse, which is also another colorway that I have reimagined uh, through the years here. Uh, but this one goes from a deep green and black into an icy bluish green and then into white. This one was called Dragon's Fire. And this is a really earthy colorway that went from browns to browns and greens into fiery orange reds and black. So one of my favorites. This one I called Pumpkin Pie. And I'll just wait for the exposure to reset here. There we go. And as you can see, it goes from oranges into browns. So it's like this really crunchy pumpkin pie color. Uh, which is really fun. Then this one is a more light one. This one is called Golden Meadow. And I took the colors that I usually use for prongs and I put it into a gradient and I called it Golden Meadow just because it was what it reminded me of. So it has really golden yellows fading to really um, these are very sparsely, this one's sparsely speckled. So it goes from yellows into the sagey greens and then to a red tone brown. So you can see the gradation there, how it goes from yellow to green to brown, but it's very pale. So this will fade and speckle on a creamy background. And then this last one I called Sand and Sea. So this is fading from a stony gray brown into shades of blue and then really dark blue. So these pairs, these are 250 gram skeins. So when I unravel the double stranded sock blank, it goes right into 250 gram skeins, which is perfect for sock knitting. Um, when I unravel, I can show you the process of how I do it, but I take the two strands that are here and you can see they're kind of kinked up a bit. And as you get further into the blank, the more kinked up they are because they were, you know, wet and then they dried in the blank form so I could take photos. But what I do is I unravel it into two skeins, pair them off so I can keep the pairs together, and then I soak them and dry them again. So there's an extra step for me, but I feel like it makes sock blanks a little more accessible. The effect that you would get from these sock blanks is a little more accessible to more people when I do it that way. So. Those are in the shop right now. If you're interested in them, they're like what is left right on this top corner here is all that's left and what I showed you. So there's really only one or two left of each one. So if you are liking them, um, don't wait. You should grab it while it's there because these aren't repeatable colorways. Um, I can try to repeat them and each one in, the, in and of themselves is unique. So even if you use them in the same project, you'll want to alternate your your skeins or your pairs, so to speak, so that you get an even transition. But you can use them just like you would use any other gradient. So you can put them in a shawl. So you can do, you can start with one gradient, like say you're doing a center down shawl, you could start with one in the middle and you go all the way to the end of one ball and you pick up the second ball and go all the way out. Or you can alternate every couple of rows between your balls balls <laughs> between your skeins to um to get uh, a smooth transition from one color to the next to the next um it just depends how you want to do it what I am thinking I want to do is first shut off this radiator and then second um there's a pattern that's coming out Mina Phillip is doing a shawl pattern and with fingering weight yarn and I believe it, you can use scrap yarn with it and our mini skeins, but I wanted to use my speckle gradients. So I wanted to use two pairs of speckle gradients and then I think it's two solid or tonal yarns and 
two, so 300 grams, one, or maybe one, two, three, I don't know, it's either 300 or 400 grams, and this shawl is huge. Um, it's huge, but I wanted to use that as a sample, uh, that you can use the speckle gradients for other things. So I'm going to go shut this radiator off, and then we will get to what is in the shop right now for regular speckled yarn, and the things that I dyed for that, and as well as some new dyed stuff that is not quite in the shop yet. So be right back. Okay, well, I'm back, and I... I'm dropping things. I have things balanced on my lap. I do not have a good setup for filming right now. But uh, I did want to show you the things that were in the shop that I tied up last month, like a few weeks ago, uh, for a shop update. I didn't do a podcast, but I did do a shop update and a post on Instagram. So I wanted to show you what is left of that. Uh, in this cube, there's probably several on the sparkle base that are still available. Most of the um, everyday sock colors are gone but you should be able to get your hands on it if you would like it. I believe there's only one of these left. One of them has just sold today, but this is Bright Bow. So I took the colors or some of the colors that I used for the Bright Bow gradient and I made a speckled yarn. So this is coming out a bit more exposed than it actually is. There we go, that's better. Um, so it's all the fluorescent colors from pink to yellow, orange, green, blue, and purple. And it's all just speckled all over the place. So it is very bright. It's almost too bright to show up properly on camera. The camera does a pretty good job of ca capturing the colors, but not, not nearly as well as... Um, seeing it in person. It, these should also be blacklight reactive. They are fluorescent dyes, so it should be a blacklight reactive yarn, which is really fun. But you can see here all the different color speckles in the yarn. So it's got a nice pinkish peach base, and then all the colors are kind of speckled over top. The pink, the pink and the orange dyes if it's not super, super hot, well, even if it is super hot, the pink dye does like to migrate through the yarn, so it ends up giving this really cool uh, fluorescent pink, pale fluorescent pink base, which is really fun. So this was Bright Bow. Let's put this back on. Oh my goodness. I did not wrap the skate tight enough. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. So Bright Bow is here. That's the last one. Um, let's see, then I have this one which is called Queen of Hearts. This I dyed up for Valentine's Day. It was my Valentine's Day color this year. And it's really nice uh, dark plummy purples. So there's plum purples and pinks and a cool tone purple and black. So it's a few different colors, and then one of these purples, it likes to speckle blue, which is really cool. So we've got some really cool pink and purple and blue speckles that are kind of all together. So you can see it a bit here. And so it's on a white base, so all those speckles are on a white base, so it should be very delicate when it actually knits up. But yes, it's... Queen of Hearts. The next ones I have, let's see, we have Birthday Sprinkles. I did this color on my worsted base when I did the worsted update ever, and it is a plummy purple with blue and chartreuse. So yeah, it's a plummy purple, pink, blue, and chartreuse. So it should knit up very delicately. Again, it's on a white base. And it should look like birthday sprinkles, which is really fun. Um, <clears throat> or some semblance of birthday sprinkles. But you can see here the speckles are very vibrant. So it's on the white base, but very vibrant speckles. So that's really fun. So let us see here. And then I have a couple of colors that are also on 
think all the gilly water is gone. I also dyed up gilly water, which is a green with blue on fingering weight, but I think that all sold out within, you know, a couple of days of posting. <clears throat> but I did bring back a fan favorite and one of my favorites, which is Ron Weasley. Um, and it's really fun to see the difference between the bases. So on the top, I have it in sparkle, and on the bottom, I have it in everyday sock. And um, you can see the sparkles in there. It's always hard to show on camera what the sparkle, there it is. There you can see them twinkling, twinkle, twinkle. So I have a few of these on everyday sock and on sparkle sock. And you can see the difference. I mean, they both are beautiful. The sparkle sock always comes out much deeper than the everyday sock in terms of like, the saturation, how it looks. So I think that's really fun. So, but I put up the skeins, I put a photo of the skeins that are in the dye lot. So all the sparkle are listed together from that dye lot and so are all the everyday sock. So you should be able to get what you need. And then another favorite that I brought back, which is gonna be very hard to show in this lighting and I apologize for that, but it's Luna. So Luna is a really pale yarn. It's on a white base. And we have a cool tone pink, a warm yellow, and a blue purple. So it's a very blue toned purple. It looks almost blue, but it really is a purple. Um, so there it is on everyday sock, and you can see how delicately it is speckled. And here it is on sparkle. And you can see the sparkles here, twinkle, twinkle. Um, they're nice silver sparkles, you can see the light speckling. So this comes up very delicately. I really like this for socks. Something that's not too heavily patterned. It would look nice in cables. Um, but yeah, I really like this. Um, then I had prongs. I had some in everyday sock. Apologize for the, the bright light here. I had some in everyday sock, but all I have left is prongs on sparkle. I My next dye up the next time I'm dyeing, I will dye this up on Everyday Sock. This is one of my most favorite yarns. It's on a cream base with um, deep chestnut reddish brown colors, um, a sage green, and then this kind of wheat, weedy yellow. And it speckles up very delicately. It's a nice earthy color. If it would focus, I would be forever grateful. Thank you. Uh, so there it is. The red tone in the brown also breaks. So I believe the yellow and the brown both break a little bit red, so there sometimes are red speckles in here, which is intentional. Um, but yeah, one of my most favorite colors. All right, so let's get into some new stuff. So I do want to use the speckled gradients in Mina Phillips' new shawl design. I'm really interested in that, so I'm probably going to purchase that when it comes out. She's in testing right now, I believe. Um, <clears throat> I saw it on her Instagram, so I'm planning to do that. So I'm going to dye some tonals, and maybe if I can get it to look nice, I could put out some kits for a specific colorway combination uh, if people are interested in that. Also coming up is another Hohilo Catelli um, starting point type shawl. So it's a fading point, I believe she's calling it. And it's the same shape of a shawl, but it's using the fade technique. So you're fading from one color to the next to the next. It's not as graphic design as the other one, I believe. But she showed a picture of her mom stitching on it. I think she's one of her test knitters. So I'm on the lookout for that to see if I can put out kits, but she will put out a call to dyers for uh, putting kits together. So let's get into the stuff that I've dyed in the last couple of weeks. I haven't had a chance to uh, post any of this stuff yet for a couple of reasons. One, uh, I've been sick and the kids have been sick, so my time is limited, but also I spilled coffee on my laptop. And right now it's working but the insides are coated with a nice sticky amalgamation of coffee and creamer. So um, I'm either gonna have to rip my computer apart to clean it or I'm going to have to replace it because it is not long for this world. <laughs> um, I'm feeling pretty awful about it, if I'm honest with you. So uh, I'm gonna try and get this podcast edited and these listings up before this computer dies so that I can at least have things here. 
But let me show you. This last eye up, I did it, everything is an everyday sock. And yeah, I don't think I had anything crazy. I do have one colorway that's made a triumphant return, which you will see, and then some new colorways. So let me get into that with you. So these are the colors. They look just white right now because everything's overexposed. Um, <laughs> so here are the colors. Everything is on a neutral white base, as a lot of my colors end up being nowadays. Um, I'll have to do some really variegated ones like Ron Weasley in my next dye up because I've been dyeing a lot of very faded colors. So this, as you may know, is Flowers for Dobby. So this is one of my original colorways that I dyed. It is on a creamy grayish type base. It has very slight uh, variation in the tone of the base. So it's cream, like a, the ecru color of the yarn, and some grayish, grayish tan sections. And then it is speckled with this beautiful cool tone pink. It's one of my most favorite colors and it's one of my favorite colors to use. I use this color in worsted weight on my cozy schlanket, which if I can remember I'll put a picture here. Um, it is one of my favorite colors. So I'm bringing it back on Everyday Sock for the next update. And then I have four new colors. So this color is inspired by the Pantone color of the year, which is a violet. And I forget the name of the violet. Anyway, I'll put a swatch of the color here. And so I wanted to dye a speckled purple yarn, but not too purple. Purple, but not overly purple. Purple enough for everyone. So this is a really fun color. I think it has four shades of purple in it, and that's, that's it. It's just four shades of purple speckled on a white base. And it came out nice and crispy, I like to call it. All the speckles are so crisp in this, in this dye lot. So... It's got warm and cool tones of purple. Um, one of the purple tones, purple colors, breaks to a blue. So I think there's three or four purple colors. Yeah, three or four. I think it's three or four. I don't have my notes in front of me on what I used, but it's both cool and warm tones of purple. One of the purples breaks blue, and it's very delicately speckled on a white base. So very cool. You can even see some pink some of the dye broke with pink, which is really awesome. Um, so yeah, I have four skeins of this on Everyday Sock. I think I'm gonna call it purple, but not too purple, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, and then there's this one. This was part of a dye along. <clears throat> so one of the yarn groups I'm in, I can't remember which one, they all do weekly dye along photos and I haven't done one in a while. This one I'm calling the Avenue and it's a black and white photo that has gradations of gray and then this warm yellow. So this base is showing up very white on camera, but it's actually a very pale yellow. Let's see if I can get a good, good read on the color. So it's a very pale yellow base with darker yellow speckles and gray. Um, so yeah, so this is called The Avenue, and that will be up as well. <clears throat> this one is going to be called Forest of Dean, and it's earthy, as most of my colors end up being very earthy, but it has this really nice, deep, woodsy green with brown and yellow. So it feels a little bit similar to Prongs, but it's different tones different tones. So you can see the difference in tone here. This is more of a sage blue-green, this is more of a forest green, and the proportions are different. It's a similar color, but not quite. Um, prongs tends to have more brown, this is more green. So there's that. And then the last one, so I dyed this up as a portal-inspired colorway by the colors of the game. So this gray speckled color with orange, a really ruddy orange and blue, like a cerulean type blue on a white base. <clears throat> and it came out okay. It is not my favorite color. I think it'll it'll knit up really nicely or crochet up really nicely. 
but you can see it's on a white base, so it should be pretty subtle, the speckling. And the gray, the gray uh, did gray out the white a little bit on this uh, dye lot, not a ton, but it's like a almost white base. And so this happens to be the same color as Tide Pods, so I thought about naming it something really cheeky, like don't eat this yarn or something. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I thought it was kind of a cute little color way. <clears throat> I tried to dye it so that the blue and the orange didn't mix because they will make brown. <laughs> so I succeeded in that, but um, it's a very subtle colorway. So I thought about naming it something with portal or naming it something with Tide Pods, which I thought would be really funny. Like this is yarn, not food. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm out of practice and out of focus. So that's everything that I have dyed. Those colors will go in the shop, those five new colors, plus the speckle fade that I showed you was a custom dye that will also go in the shop during my next update. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram, you really should because that's where I do post mo more often. I post there at least a few times a week. <laughs> I'm trying to right now is get back into the groove of posting again now that we're all recovering. I'm not sure if you can hear my voice is a little raspy, but it's because I've just been coughing for a month, so <laughs> that's fun. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the um, tour I did of my local yarn shop last week. So I'll put um, up here in the iCard, I'll put a link to that video. If you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. I would love to know more about the yarn shops that you guys have in your areas, whether you just go to Hobby Lobby or Michael's, or if you do have a locally, a local curated shop that brings in different types of yarn than you would normally see <clears throat> at a craft store. So, um, but yeah, go check that out. Uh, and I really think that's about it. Uh, the only other thing that I was planning, and I'll show you a piece of this. So, all right. So I still have some of these knitters tins. I had the sexy knitter make me some knitters tins, which are branded with my logo. And they're just these really simple, you know, notions, little bits of notions with little stitch markers and things that she's made and a tape measure, a really, you know, a basic stitch counter, things like that. Um, <clears throat> so I still have a few of these left and I was thinking about putting them back up in the shop, but I also wanted to do it with other things. So I ordered, um, these things. This is a really nice notebook with ivory paper and I thought about putting this notebook along with this pen. So this is like a stylus pen. It's a really nice pen black with black ink so it has you know the Little Bean logo on it and my website. This is also branded with my logo. And this also has a band so that you can um, close it up. So what I was thinking was putting these together as kind of like knitter's notes or something, like a little set, a gift set that you could give to someone. Um, I also ordered some bags with my logo on it, but I was not very happy with how it printed um, on the black bag because I ordered black two black bags and um, what is it like a burlap bag one of the bags I really like but they only had black in stock but what happened was you can see like there's a slight coloration difference if this will focus here we go there's a slight coloration difference between um, this logo and this logo and it's because of um, even though it's a full color transfer onto the black, it's not fully opaque. So the black kind of tones down the color because you can see this is a vibrant kind of salmon pink color. And this is more of a, not as salmon, it's, it's a little cooler toned, but it's because it has black behind it. So I really like these. If you guys are interested in them, I'm happy to list them up in the shop. Um, <clears throat> but... I like I like these a lot. I just wish that the logo was better. I'm just being really nitpicky about it. But 
what's nice is that it's actually a spiral bound notebook but it's made with a really sturdy cover so you the notes can lie flat and you can even bend it over but it's not like a, your traditional um, notebook where these are two separate pieces the two front cover and back cover it's a single piece so it's like a faux leather outer with a it's really thick thick cardboard so it's well constructed and I think it would be really nice I want to put my dye journal in one of these uh, transfer over from my like crazy messed up notebook that I have that holds most of my dye recipes so let me know what you guys think about that. Um, I was thinking, I have all these ideas, and like after the first of the year, I was like, oh, I want to do this, and I want to do this, so I'm ordering all these samples, and nothing has come quite come together yet, so I just wanted to share that with you, and if you have any ideas, you please feel free to leave them in the comments uh, down below. So that's really about it. Not much knitting, no new spinning. <laughs> No new crochet, barely any dye, although somehow I've managed to fill nearly 45 minutes of time, or at least 40 minutes of time, with Blabber. Yeah. Anyway. All right. That's it. That's all I have for you today. Sorry this is a little bit short. Sorry there's not too much fiber art stuff going on, but it's just the season right now of being sick and having two little kids. It's just... Ugh. I needed to like move on. I need school vacation to be over. I need illness to be over. I just need all of this stuff to kind of like move on out. Just go, 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 go. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and um, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.